to reach the day of independence. It was a difficult road that we traveled. First, it's a milestone that the people of this country have achieved peace and stability in a country that had had the war. We brought a policy of reconciliation in this country. And uh, through the policy of reconciliation, we say one Namibia, one nation. Firstly, uh, Namibia is doing very well, as you are saying. When it comes to policy formulation, we have very good policy documents, we have good dreams, but to actualize those dreams is a problem. So my aim is to implement, to implement, to implement, to start with. Now, we, we have been very lucky and it's because of political stability in the country. If you want development, have a health community, have a health society. If you don't have, if you have a people who are sick, you cannot talk about development because development must be done by people who are physically fit. So we concentrated in uh, education and in the health services for our people. Um, and then we, all these things have been done in uh, uh, a system of programming. We have, ever since we got independence, we have put up five years five years period of development uh, through the National Development Plan that goes for five years. Um, the National Development Plan number two was more now to start working to start working, implementation of some of the things. We looked at our people languishing in poverty, unemployment, and all this. Then we started looking at our people who were banished in the rural areas by the former colonial establishment. And uh, we said, we wanted to equalize our people. And uh, today, if you go to church in a certain village, and you go to church in Vinduk, you see that the people, they put on more or less the same attire, not the same in the form of a uniform, but you see that the level really has gone up. Now, we considered how to get development to the rural people. You needed the roads. You needed the roads to, re to go to the rural areas, to the villages, or close to the villages. Not only that, you use those roads to bring the bricks for building schools, classrooms, or whatever, to enable the people to have a benefit as uh, that other people can get. We have done so, and we continue to do that. By the way, 
when you talk about development, you are not talking about an event. You are talking about a process. Um, I remember when I went to Britain uh, last year, uh, when I was talking to the British ministers, they were talking about development. And I was wondering, but I did not wonder too much because I knew that development means a process. The British are still doing development. The French are still doing development and all these kind of things. That convinces me on what I understood, that the development is a process, is not an event. Here too, we have started the development to alleviate poverty from our people in a way of a process. We have started the development in a way of process too, uh, get our people skilled. Namkol was established uh, through an act of parliament, act number one of 1997, and we officially delinquent from the Ministry of, of Education the 1st of April 1998. It's when we became a parastatal, we resort under the Ministry of Education. We have a governing board. Uh, the chief executive officer is reporting to the board. When we have started way back in 98, we had just over 16,000 students. Currently, we are busy with our enrollment for 2013. But in 2012, we have registered more than 35,000 students. So Namkol is the biggest institution in this country in terms of student numbers. Our mandate is to provide educational opportunities for adults and out-of-school youth in the areas of professional development or professional courses, in the area of general education and in the area of technical and vocational programs. I think we, we, we play a very critical role in terms of our national development plans I mean, I have just told you that we have enrolled more than 34,000 students. And if you go back over the years, some of them went through, through the institutions of higher learning. Some of them have started uh, with their own employment. Uh, I have just mentioned to you about the professional programs. I've told you about the technical vocational programs. Those are skills development programs. And when you look at NDP4, I think that is a, a, a critical area that they are emphasizing the issue of technical and vocational programs so that we enhance the skills for our people. And that's how Namibia can become, in my view, an industrialized nation when we have skilled people in the country. I think the message I have for my students is that they should regard Namcol as an institution of their choice. I don't think they they should regard it as an institution for failures because the moment you have that in your mind, I don't think they will be able to succeed in their, in their studies. And I'm telling, when I talk to them, I'm telling them to be in a distance education institution is different to be in a conventional system. So there are key attributes that we need from students. Hard work, commitment, perseverance, and the most importantly I mentioned to them, is discipline and discipline because if you are attached to Namco and you lack discipline, you will not make it, unfortunately.